blasts drown out the call to prayer. A day to celebrate the end of Ramadan is marked by endless violence. Many remain trapped as safe routes open, then close, including a British teacher from Coventry. There were three big booms. One was massive. We just sort of lay here, uh, me and my wife. Uh, we didn't, uh, didn't actually talk to each other. Um, and we shook. What do you and, and fellow Brits feel about how the British Embassy has approached this? I suppose I've got, I'll do it in two words. It's gone from anger, definitely there's lots of anger in there, to uh, comical. I think, that, I think between those two is where most of us are, uh, at least the Brits that I've talked to. We're not, we're not very impressed, I think I'd put it that way. People continue to flee and volunteers are working overtime to coordinate their safe passage. White Sudanese army and RSF are attacking each other. Uh, my friend and I are um, trying to find best passage for people to leave their location to another uh, safer place. He makes one of many calls to a friend, hey, asking a if her road is safe to use. Mozab has helped many to safety, including American researcher Rebecca. Her calls to her embassy were fruitless. I am livid at my embassy. I think that their advice actively is going to hurt people. All of us, Sudanese and foreigners, deserve safety and are at risk because of this war. And while foreigners have been failed by their embassies, we have all been failed by the Sudanese generals and foreign powers that placed us in this situation. A week of terror that has felt like a lifetime for the millions who see no end in sight. Yusril Baghir. Sky News.